My name is Bart, Bart Lamprechts. I'm officially for originally from the Netherlands. Um, came to Thailand four years ago. I currently teach urban planning in Kassetsat University Faculty of Architecture. I have a background in civil engineering, uh, infrastructure planning to be exact, um, and as well in social sciences in human geography. That's where I got my PhD in the University of Amsterdam. Well, that's okay. I like Thai food, um, for starters. Um, I like its um, variety. Um, it's just a huge variety of dishes uh, that are actually all very tasty and, uh, and enjoyable. I like the spiciness. Um, friends and, and Restaurant staff are often surprised <laughs> that I order for the spicy variant of any kind of meal. Um, but I like it, I like spicy food. Uh, compared to Dutch food, uh -huh, that's a hard one. Um, actually, Dutch food, I would say Dutch food has difficulties comparing or competing with, uh, with Thai food. Um, it's much more uh, planned in general. Um, variety is less, I would say. Um, we do have a number of good things in Dutch food. I mean, we have very nice breads, cakes, uh, our dairy products. I think they are nice. Um, but maybe another difference, which which is perhaps even bigger, is is the, the culture of eating. Uh, Dutch culture of eating is generally quite efficient, uh, especially around breakfast and lunch, which are very, which normally uh, follow a very strict pattern, uh, requiring very little thinking from the, the people who are eating, and then by that it becomes a very efficient way of eating, uh, while uh, the Thai way of eating is much more focusing on uh, having fun enjoying the food, taking time, um, which, which is also very nice. Uh, but being Dutch, I sometimes uh, also like the efficiency of, of the Dutch pattern of eating. For me, um, a water adaptive city would be a city um, that is capable of dealing with water um, and actually capable of dealing with the many different phases of water. I mean, water is always there uh, in the canals, in the clongs, in the river, uh, by the rain. Um, but sometimes water is just there and doing its good work and sometimes water is too abundant um, and has the potential to cause problems um, and damage. And a water that the city is able to deal with also this particular phase of water, the problematic phase of water. Um, it means that the infrastructure of the city is capable of dealing with an abundance of water, but also that the people citizens are um, capable of living their life and doing their things when water is too abundant without sustaining too much damage. Actually the, the key to that answer is already also part of my previous answer. Um, I think that's the people and okay, people is a, is a big group, but, but that means households, uh, businesses, uh, any, let's say, any, any group of people that makes up a society, an urban society, um, together with the government, um, and also together with for example, educational institutions, universities, 
other research institutes who are containing a lot of knowledge uh, or at least should be capable of collecting a lot of knowledge, developing a lot of knowledge about how to create an urban city. Um, they should all be working together, I would say. Um, choosing representatives uh, from each of these groups, uh, discussing the different interests, the different experience, the different skills that are all located in these groups of people, um, and then work together to come up with uh, feasible and, and uh, potentially uh, successful solutions uh, to make the city more adaptive. Uh, and then again, both in the aspects of infrastructure, but also in the aspects of people's behavior, uh, the preparedness of government institutions, etc., etc. So people, government, and educational institutions, I would say, they, they make the core uh, actors in a team that, that should be working towards an adaptive city. To be very concrete, uh, I might um, tomorrow be um, proofreading um, um, a manual, or let's say a flood preparation manual that we made uh, in my department uh, for communities in Central Thailand uh, to help them prepare for a possible next flood event. That's a manual that we um, uh, made on the basis of a workshop uh, that we held last year in one of the neighboring provinces of Bangkok and that produced a lot of ideas uh, about how communities could prepare themselves better for a next flood event and we have just drafted this this manual and uh, it's time to uh, proofread the, uh, the result so that would be a very concrete uh, activity contributing to the adaptive city um, but more on a personal level um, it's a harder question I wouldn't know the answer to be honest because um, it's hard actually um, to um, to do it all by yourself I mean that's that's I think that's uh, I mean everyone can make a small contribution by himself if only by, by, for example, arranging your house um, in a way that, it's, that it will be more um, uh, adaptive to floods, uh, for example, by, 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 by uh, using water resistant materials instead of uh, water sensitive materials. Wood is more sensitive to water damage than, 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 than tiles and stones, for example. I mean, that's a thing that, that everyone could do. Uh, but to create the water adaptive city, um, actually people need to work together. Um, um, as I explained in the other answers, um, people have to reach out to their neighbors, to the government institutions. Uh, the government institutions need to reach out to the people. Uh, actually even more important. Um, I think in my work as, as a researcher and teacher, I mean, I can make small contributions. Uh, but it's only small.